Hey guys, it's Sanya, welcome back to my channel. I'm a tutor for Complete Paraplegic and I want to educate you about catheters. So catheters are tubes that are put into the urethra to allow urine to flow out. There's actually four types of catheters that people use after spinal cord injury. Uh, the ones I use are intermittent catheters, so these are put in the urethra uh, intermittently. So they're put in the urethra, urine flows out and then you take them out so you're not left with any tubes or anything like that. Uh, this one uh, has got a bag attached which is useful as well. These types are low for cows and speedy cath compact sets. They have a lower infection rate um, than indwelling catheters which is number two. Two, indwelling catheters. These remain in the bladder at all times. Um, this is often what you're given straight after spinal cord injury so it's in the urethra all the time um, and urine just flows and flows you can get like little flip flows in hospital and it will like pause it and then open it again to train your bladder a bit after spinal cord injury number three is suprapubic catheters and these are a type of indwelling catheter but they're actually inserted in the abdomen these are for people that require long-term catheterization and have had issues with other forms of catheters or just people that urethral catheters don't work for. Number four is external catheters. So these are for men and these are connected to a collection bag, making them less invasive um, and they fit on kind of like a condom. Different forms of catheterization work best for different people. I use self-intermittent catheters and the, this is what I'm really happy I've got because it means that I've got no catheter in me all the time. So everything's just normal and I can just put it in and then take it out again. Um, and I go every time I need the toilet, I'll use one. Um, I use them quite a few times a day as well. However, because catheters are put in the urethra or other forms, you can be exposed to quite serious infections. Um, urinary tract infections are very common for people with spinal cord injuries. I've had my fair share. Um, and that's just because you're inserting a foreign object into yourself <laughs> and expecting not to get an infection. I'd like a period where I just seemed to get back-to-back -back UTIs, which was just really annoying. And obviously from the catheters, you're inserting bacteria into the urinary tract. Also, people with spinal cord injuries may not be able to empty their bladder absolutely fully um, from catheter use. Uh, one question I do get is, do they hurt? So for me, I'm a T12 complete paraplegic, so I am very low down. Um, but when I insert a catheter in, I cannot feel it. Um, However, when I have had a UTI, sometimes I get an actual sting, but it's only a little bit. And I think like with UTIs, they can be so serious for people with spinal cord injury because of that reduced sensation, because you can't feel that really sharp stinging if you went to the toilet naturally. Um, so that means you're gonna have it in your body for longer and longer. And I've had some real horror stories with UTIs. Um, I have had to be hospitalised and often, again, I don't realise until it's too late where the UTI is so severe because I can't feel that pain of just going to the toilet naturally um, that people without spinal cord injuries, they feel pain, they go to the doctor and get antibiotics but the longer you leave it before antibiotics, the worse you're going to get um, and yes, I've had to go to hospital because um, there's been periods where I'll go incredibly feverish uh, to re really, really, really hot. Um, there's been times where my lips go blue. There's been times where I actually lose control of my speech. <laughs> and I don't know how that works, but there's been times where I'll just start talking gobbledygook <laughs> um, and I'll be in a weird state where I'm kind of almost, not like I'm hallucinating, but like I'm just out of it, like a weird kind of dreamlike state, the fever, and then not being able to speak properly. Uh, like just going boo 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 boo, boo like just speaking absolute rubbish. This has happened twice where I've been taken to hospital because of it, because they have to check that it's not a stroke. And even though I can say to them, it's likely it's a UTI, they have to check it's a stroke. And there's been times where I've actually been you know, suffering with a really bad UTI, the ambulance has come, they've seen me talking gobbledygook um, and kind of phasing out. They thought I was having seizures um, 
and they were talking about epilepsy and all sorts onto the ambulance ride to the hospital um, where I was terrified that it was epilepsy or something because I was just so out of it. You know, um, it's scary and because UTIs, they can lead to sepsis. Um, and my basketball coach, he's had sepsis a few times and that can be deadly. He thought that it was the end of his life a few months back when he had sepsis. And it's, intermittent catheters are the best for reducing UTIs because they're inserted intermittently and they're not in the urethra all the time. And it's important to empty the bladder regularly. I have to say that sometimes I can't be bothered and because you obviously, the only way I know if I need the toilet is off and get a spasm and I'll feel a slight kind of lower, lower tummy um, discomfort. Um, and there's been times where I ignore it. <laughs> um, but you need to empty it regularly. And just making sure you're drinking enough. Um, I do take like cranberry supplements as a kind of preventative, but with cranberry supplements and stuff, the kind of effect is quite mixed and they're not sure exactly if that really can prevent uh, UTIs. And people with spinal cord injuries may need to be treated longer with antibiotics because the infection has been in your body for so long. You know, there's so many complications. Your kidneys can get infected. Uh, like I said, sepsis, bladder stones, uh, and just other catheter-related complications. So yeah, it's quite, it can be really serious. Um, yeah, it's crazy when you talk about it. And like I watch my videos and think, oh my God, I go through a lot. But as someone in a wheelchair, you just don't think about it because why would you want to think Oh, I'm paralysed for life, I'm never going to walk again, and I've got all these issues and complications to my life. What good's that going to do? But unfortunately for spinal cord injury patients, like, you've got no choice. You have to, you have to just deal with it. Um, but it's scary. It can be really scary. I'll show you as well the tube, like, lube just squirted everywhere. Um, yeah, they're lubricated. Um, and then the urine just flows out here. So you put that in, urine flows out, and then you put it in the bin. This one is a Speedy Calf Compact Set, again lubricated. And it's got a bag attached, so for situations where you can't find a toilet, because there's so many places that don't have a disabled toilet that you can do in your chair, or, or kind of lying down or wherever you need to be. So yeah, I hope I've I hope I've educated you a bit more about um, catheterisation, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.